So learned helplessness. We've talked about this before, right? And I wanted to relate it to Asian parenting because I think a lot of Asian parents, growing up in the system, you know, different Asian cultures, a lot of them are Confucian-based. So you're taught to accept the cards you're dealt in life. You know, change isn't always good, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So a lot of that parenting, that stick to the status quo, that don't take risks, stick to the beaten path, is that the right expression? Walk the beaten path, whatever. I think it comes from just this sense of learned helplessness that Asian societies give its citizens. I mean, after all, if the majority of your citizens felt like they couldn't change the cards they were dealt, they felt like they couldn't change themselves, they couldn't change society, they couldn't change government, then they'll accept the bullshit that the ruling class gives them, right? But the problem with this type of mentality when it's applied to the West is that the West is more dynamic. So you have this learned helplessness that you built up in people through generations. And now these parents through education or whatever come to the West and it's hard for them to shake it, honestly. So this video is not really, I mean, it is critical, but it's also understanding. Right? It's, it's, it's hard for Asian parents to shake that sort of learned helplessness that the architects of their society have given to their ancestors. So, and I wanted to tell a very funny story. So when I was in high school, I had really bad acid reflux disease. And normally as a kid, you don't get this kind of bullshit. So there's something wrong, right? And I'm an otherwise healthy person. Like, I was running cross country. I stopped because I got too busy and stressed out, but I was running cross country and I wasn't a good cross country runner, but I could run miles and miles and miles and not collapse and die. And like before that I, I did Kung Fu and everything. So I wasn't, I was never an unhealthy person. My parents, you know, they're cooking, cooked with too much oil, but still is healthier than probably the traditional American lifestyle. And then my dad really likes to eat sugary stuff. so. You know, there was too many snacks in my home, but like even then, like you shouldn't be getting acid reflux disease as a kid. And so I would, you know, it fucking hurt me. It would hurt me after every meal. It hurt me. Sometimes I wake up at night. I would tell my parents and then their solution is, oh yeah, it's chronic. You can't do anything about it. Or sometimes I would eat medication. I would take these really strong proton pump inhibitors and these things, the, the problem with proton pump inhibitors, for those of you who've never taken them, is that they're not just silencing the acid pumps in your stomach, they work throughout your blood, right? So they're, they're silencing the proton pump inhibitors in your bones, they're silencing the proton pump inhibitors in your brain, etc. So it fucks you up. And I didn't want to be on these medication medications. I mean, I don't want to be on this medication for the rest of my life. So I didn't, I was trying to find other ways. You know, maybe there was lifestyle things or other things I could do to help me get past this sort of, you know, this really weird disease that you associate with old people. So, and my parents, the reason I tell the story is my parents and their sort of learned helplessness parenting paradigm, the whole time they were opposed to me. They would tell me, yeah, I'm wasting my time, I'm being immature, I'm, I'm being stupid because this, these are the cards I was dealt in life, so I'm supposed to live with this disease for the rest of my life. Such bullshit. My dad would get mad when I would try to go to the doctor to, you know. I, I, did, a, I did an endoscopy, which is you take this tube with the camera, you go down to see what's going on, and then I wanted to get tested to see if I was allergic or sensitive to any foods, which by the way, I am. I found out recently I'm actually, I have a, I'm allergic to bananas. It's really weird, but I can't eat bananas. And I, it's, I really can't really eat citrus fruits too. But see, I didn't know any of this back then. And I wanted to get tested. I want to see if I had a gluten allergy. You know, these are things that could help your stomach, right? If, you're, if, if your entire body's happy, it probably won't act up and fuck you up in the stomach. But my dad, and the thing is, my parents were trained in the medical field, so it's not like they didn't understand what I was doing, but I think either they just, they just didn't want to spend the money, which I don't think it was, because it's not like my parents didn't have money, right? So 
So they just, it's literally just learned helplessness. It's, they're applying that to the kid. It's like, oh, your kid has this big health problem. There's nothing we can do about it, despite the fact that they were doctors. And so, yeah, I just, it was so fucking annoying. Sophomore year and junior year and a little bit into senior year, I just, every day, three meals a day, it would fuck up. And then I would exercise and it would fuck me up. Like I would do a, I would do a sit up and the acid would squirt into the esophagus. And the whole time I was, I, I, I wanted to take probiotics because when I was in China, my, I got sick almost every weekend. So the problem with Chinese society is, was, is that they over prescribed antibiotics. So I would get sick and then I would take antibiotics. So I fucked up my gut biome and I knew, hey, you know, something in my heart knew, hey, if, if my gut biome's fucked up, probably the rest of my body's fucked up because all the good bacteria in your body, they help you generate vitamins, they help you block all the bad stuff, and, you know, they're essential for your survival, and the fact that I killed so many of them those two and a half years in China when I was eight and a half to ten, it's probably not good, maybe that was a cause of it, so I tried to take probiotics, and then my parents would be like, no, what the fuck are you doing, and I tell my parents, I'd be like, hey, um, don't cook with as much oil, etc., and my mom would get all offended, oh, what, uh, I, so it's like, every time I try to find a solution, it'd be met with so much opposition, and it would just frustrate me, you know, I'm the one fucking suffering, my mom has the same thing, and I'm like, hey, if I find a way to help, it'll help you too, but my mom just wanted, my mom just accepted, it's like, I'll just have to take these medications that fuck up my brain, fuck up my bones for the rest of my life, and it just, yeah, it was, it was just horrible, um, what ultimately happened was, so, Right, the, the human digestive system, it's, it's one tube connected. It goes from your mouth all the way down to your butthole or whatever. And the problem is if one part of it's a little not functioning well, everything's not functioning well because it's one tube connected. So I'm Asian and I grew up squatting. Like, you know, I'm gonna squat. I grew up squatting, like I'm squatting right now. This is very comfortable for me. So when you take a dump like this, it's very natural, it's very, it's very, it's, it's just, it feels good, right? It's, but you come to America, you see, I'm, you're in a sitting position now when you're taking a dump. And it just, it's not as good for your digestive system. You don't get as much out. It's all about the angle, right? There's a, this is, this is, this is the, this is sort of your anal rectal area. And if you sit, there's this muscle, right? This muscle that prevents you from sort of pooping when you're walking. It's not completely loose. If you squat, the muscle loosens. So I'm gonna sit back down again. What happened was I just, I ended up building my own little platform so I could squat over my, my regular American Western toilet. And so suddenly I was pooping well. So now that part of my body was fixed. And then I'm taking probiotics. I don't give a fuck, you know, I tell my parents, I don't give a fuck, I'm still gonna take probiotics. So now it's like, you're fixing, you're fixing all parts of your gut, and then I find out I'm actually lactose intolerant, so I stop eating cheese, I stop eating meat, and when I do, I take those um, lactate pills, so suddenly you're not getting bloated all the time, so suddenly you fix your lower digestive system, and then slowly and slowly and slowly your upper digestive system heals, because things aren't backed up in your gut, right, so it's, things start getting backed up up here, but it took me, I could have maybe discovered this years before if I didn't get so much opposition from my parents. My parents were just so learned helplessness and they were trying to pass that down into their, into their kid. I remember we had a neighbor, and I've actually talked about this neighbor before, but um, she was dating this guy who just worked on his car all the time and the, the guy like really had no job, he just worked on his car and he had this air vacuum that fucking made so much noise. and. I go, I go and talk to them, bro. Hey, dude, can you please keep it down? We're trying to sleep. Some of us are trying to. I'm trying to do my homework, and my parents were just so opposed to me going over to talk to them. One, you know, Asian, Asian culture, you don't like confrontation. But two, it's like it's learned helplessness. My parents are like, oh, that's just the way he is, man. He's he's an asshole. You can't change him. You can't reason with him. And I'm like, why the fuck? Do you, even if he's an asshole, you just accept that he's gonna just bully you guys like this. 
And my parents would get mad when I would try to go talk to the person. And so, like, my, it got to the point where, like, I would go try to talk to the person. My mom would get mad at me. And then I'd get mad at my mom. My mom would rather me get mad at her and curse at her than me try to go talk to that fucking asshole that was our neighbor that was causing a ruckus for the whole entire neighborhood. And you see, it's all learned helplessness. It's, but on top of that, it, it, part of it is image, right? Um, Asian culture is all about image. So you want to you wanna feel like, you want to present a good image to the outside world. You don't want to seem like you cause trouble. You don't want to seem like you're hard to deal with. So you, you almost want to internalize it. So my parents rather me get mad at them than me talk to that fucking neighbor and tell them to shut the fuck up. So I'm just telling these stories because you know, I talk a lot about Asian parenting. And if you're an Asian parent watching this, especially, you know, if you're, if you're like me, you grew up in America, maybe you're not going to do this. But if you're, if you're not a native here, you didn't grow up here, try not to pass too much of the negative bullshit from your culture down to your kids. You know, there are a lot of positive things that immigrants bring to America, right? And from Asian immigrants, you know, this hard work ethic, this humbleness, it's good. But you don't want to bring all the other bullshit. You know, oh, I, I can't change society. My kids have to stay, stay the beaten path because, you know, that, that's just how it is. You know, we can't, we can't do anything good. We just have to do the safe thing. It's all learned helplessness. My battery's about to go out. So I thank you guys for watching. And I hope you guys found this talk helpful. Um, at the end of the day, it's your kids, right? Don't fuck over their future. Whatever insecurities, whatever fucking negative emotions, keep it within you. If you can't change yourself, if you can't, just don't fucking try to drag the other people down like crabs do in a barrel. That's all I have to say. Thank you guys so much for watching. Talk to you guys next time.